Um, hi everyone, uh, nice to see you. Um, so today um, I'm going to talk about our project, uh, EOS, on, uh, on the story behind the, the project and uh, Marina. Uh, be before I start, uh, may I ask you uh, if you have a smartphone by chance? Or, yeah? Uh, how many uh, do, do you have um, an iPhone? An uh, Android smartphone? Cool. Um, so imagine that um, all your mail, I mean your regular mail, um, if it was uh, open before being delivered to your home uh, to analyze its content and possibly <coughs> slip a small flyer with an, a contextual ad, um, relative to your mail content before it gets distributed into your mailbox. Or imagine that um, your telephone operator would listen to all your conversation when you are doing a call to analyze the content um, in order to maybe broadcast a, a small contextual ads a, 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 at the end of the conversation. That would be a huge business model for you know, the post and uh, telecom operators, carriers, etc. But it doesn't happen, and the reason why it doesn't happen is that it's just forbidden. It's forbidden by law. In our modern democracies, you cannot do that with um, the mail, with phone calls, because that is personal data, that is private. And all those things today, they happen in your pocket. It happens in your pocket because most of you in this room have an Android smartphone or an iPhone. And all the smartphones send all day long your personal data to some big techs and to some third party applications. There was a, st a study um, in 2018. Um, that analyzed all those streams of personal data sent from an iPhone and an Android phone to Google. And it was found, it's a university research, Vanderbilt University, and it was found that on, for an Android smartphone, there is approximately 12 megabytes of personal data sent to Google every day. And on an iPhone, it's half of this, about six megabytes of personal data, the main reason is that Google search is by default on iPhones. In 2017, um, I realized all those things that happened in our smartphones, and I concluded that this situation was not acceptable. And I think that more and more, we are more and more people to refuse this and and, and wishing that we could use some alternative, some better alternative to this duopoly uh, on the mobile market. So 2017, it's the time I realized about this massive, this huge data, uh, personal data collection on smartphones, and I'm looking for an alternative. So there was Firefox OS, but it was soon stopped by Mozilla for some reasons. And there was Ubuntu Touch and, and a few others, but none of those alternatives really um, answered my personal needs. Uh, I just need a smartphone that just works in any situation. I have quite a normal life um, on, the, on, the, on the smartphone. Um, so I started to wonder if, if it would be possible to, to start something new something that would by default be um, protecting personal data while offering all the basic services that uh, you can see in a modern smartphone and be compatible with uh, most mobile applications. So I launched a Kickstarter to test the idea and to raise some money, actually. Um, and two months later, um, 
I got four times the amount I raised uh, initially. Uh, and most importantly, I received hundreds of messages from people around the world who are thanking me for starting this project, um, who are wishing me some success. And the reason why it's exactly, exactly the same for me, they were looking for something different that wasn't really existing on the market. So we all st we, we started the project um, on early uh, 2018. And um, the idea was to, to take as much as possible some existing pieces of open, to open source software and putting them together to build something that would be easy to use, that would work out of the box, and that would be compatible with all mobile uh, applications um, that exist in the, um, in the Android um, ecosystem. Um, so what do we do exactly? So we do two things. The first one is the mobile operating system. It's called EOS, and it's a completely de-googled Android. OSP is an Android open source project. And we do also some cloud services because I think that um, a mobile operating system is not enough today. Um, we, we, we need some basic uh, online services to work um, in coordination with the, the smartphone. So EOS, um, what do we do? We take open source, um, Android uh, open source project and we, we do some cleaning on low, low level uh, stuff. For instance, the connectivity check. Um, this is a little feature um, that is used to look uh, for internet. When, when you switch on your, your smartphone, there is a connectivity check to, to check if internet is available. This is in the source code of uh, Android Open Source Project, and uh, this is using some Google servers. Already at this stage of, you know, just, you just switch on your smartphone and there is already, already a ping to a Google server. Um, it, it is the same for NTP servers. Um, they could use any NTP server in the world, but no, they have chosen to have their own NTP server, so um, they know when people are uh, sinking their time. Um, it's the same for DNS servers, etc., etc. So we do some cleaning and we, we replace all this with um, alternatives uh, that don't collect any uh, uh, of your personal data. Then we replace the Google Play services um, by an open source equivalent. Uh, Google Play services is uh, a piece of um, proprietary software uh, that is added by Google in Android. And uh, it's used by application to, um, uh, to, to offer a, a range of um, APIs like um, localization, uh, location, um, push notification, this kind of thing. The problem is, is that it's really um, a black box. It's not open source. So we replace this by MicroJ, which is um, uh, fully open source and and which offers the, the same level of compatibility. Also, we replace some default apps. So in EOS, you have all the basic applications you can expect in a modern um, mobile operating system, like mail, uh, calendar, contacts, uh, um, messages, uh, an app store, a maps application. And all those things are um, only open source software, but one for now. Uh, it's still a proprietary software for the Maps application. All the rest is some um, uh, open source applications that um, sometimes we modify to, to improve the user interface of, uh, or to make it more um, consistent uh, with the, 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 the whole user experience. One very important thing about the project is that we, I really wanted that um, any uh, mobile application could run on the OS. Uh, I learned this from my old times uh, as a Linux distribution founder, um, where I, lear I learned that uh, you could do the best possible operating system on a PC, but uh, if people want to run 
any software like Microsoft Office and it doesn't work, they, they, they won't use your, your operating system. So with EOS, I wanted uh, to keep the best possible compatibility with existing um, applications. So we have developed that um, uh, App Store, uh, which is called App Launch. Um, it offers all applications from um, Google Play, so all mob Android mobile applications, uh, all ap open source applications from uh, F-Droid, and also some uh, a selection of uh, progressive web apps, uh, which, has, which are some um, mobile applications um, designed with um, technologies uh, from the web, like HTML and uh, CSS, and JavaScript, etc. And we, on the top of this, we had a privacy score for each application. Before you install, you have an idea of its quality in terms of privacy. Uh, it's computed from uh, the amount of hidden trackers found within each application. Trackers, it's like cookies. Uh, you know web cookies for applications, you have ap approximately the same. That's called trackers, and uh, it's, it's a way for many third parties uh, to track your usage for um, um, a specific application, and most of the time, users don't know about it. So we give this information to users because we think it's important to, for users to be informed about what really happens in applications. So informing users, that's the first step. And last year, we have introduced advanced privacy. Advanced privacy can inform the users in real time about trackers, active trackers, generated by you know, application you are using. Logging activity, so you can see uh, in the graph, uh, with some graphs, uh, uh, what happens over time. And you can also stop trackers. You can cut trackers. So if you don't want to send your, your information about your application usage to third parties, you can just say stop. This for all applications, or with some granularity, you can choose that for this application, it's going to stop trackers and maybe not one other. Um, another feature of advanced privacy is faking geolocation. So if you don't want applications to know about your real location, you can decide that you will be at the other end of uh, the planet or in the middle of the sea. Um, and the third uh, main features of advanced privacy is that you can decide that you don't want to expose your real IP address. So you can have many reasons for this. But, um, well, it's using the Tor network. Um, so today, um, EOS runs on uh, more than 200 uh, different devices. Um, actually, we, we fork Android and we fork Lineage OS, which uh, for the reason that it already supports a lot of different devices. And in sometimes we do, uh, we port uh, the OS to specific hardware. We did that for Fairphone, for, for some Gigaset uh, hardware. Um, and we are based on different versions of Android. So you can see that we started with Android 7, 8, 9, etc., etc., And we are moving uh, regular on, on a regular basis, basis. We are moving um, older Android version to newer Android version. So we can ensure that um, we keep compatibility with older devices over time. Um, the purpose of this is uh, simply to ex extend the life of, of smart smartphones. Um, to give you two, 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 two examples, uh, the Fairphone 2 was introduced in 2015. Um, it's not supported anymore by Fairphone, uh, but it still runs on iOS uh, on Android 11. Same for Galaxy S4, which was uh, released in 2013, and uh, still runs iOS on Android 11 too. So that is, that is the side effect of our project, and we want to, we can, uh, contribute to uh, building a more sustainable world. Now, 
the neural online services. Uh, we wanted to, to do something similar um, for some cloud services, similar to what we do with the operating system. So we offer this range of uh, services that offer some guarantees in terms of your personal data protection. Um, so you have an email address, you have calendar, um, notes, uh, contacts, uh, you can store some data, your pictures, videos, files, and you can retrieve all this uh, through a web interface. Um, you can edit your office documents um, online, and all those things um, obviously are um, based on open source software, uh, in particular uh, Nextcloud, um, Postfix, um, only Office. And for people who wouldn't trust us, that can happen, we offer all this package uh, so that they can install it on their own servers to, for self-hosting uh, all those services. So what's, what, what, one important thing is that we claim that we are doing a mobile, mobile operating system that, is, um, that protects uh, personal data. We think that it's important to be open source uh, because I think open source is the only way to, to have a, a real proof of what we are doing because the source code can be anal analyzed by some um, software engineers. That's auditable privacy, right? And also, we got some uh, audit. Uh, we didn't expect uh, it, actually, but um, there is um, a research paper that was uh, published, published in 2021 um, by the Trinity College at the University of Dublin. And um, they compared several um, smartphones with different operating systems, uh, commercials and, of, and, and, and um, open source. Um, operating system, and they, they found that with the notable exception of EOS, even with, when minimally uh, configured and the onset is idle, this vendor customized Android variants transmits substantial amount of information to the OS developer. So we have been um, um, put in the light thanks to this uh, research paper. Um, so today we, we the US can be uh, installed on existing hardware, but we, are, we have also some partnerships with uh, Fairphone, um, a sustainable smartphone, Gigaset, uh, we have TerraCube for the US, and we are working with um, as many possible partners uh, for the hardware. Um, last year, we have introduced a new hardware uh, that is our own phone. Um, it's here. Uh, um, so the, the, the reason why we are doing this is that we, we needed uh, um, some hardware that we could control and, um, and that we can uh, uh, ship in quantities because actually we sell those smartphones online and, uh, and um, the demand is often higher than um, what we can uh, ship. And uh, for the next projects, uh, we want to introduce end-to-end -end encryption for everyone, for our cloud services. Uh, a lot of uh, new features also in the pipe, so I encourage you to, to look at, at our website. EDOT Foundation is the non-profit side, and marina.com is dealing with the commercial uh, with smartphones and the premium uh, services. Um, so um, I think that's it. Um, I, I, if you want to join, the door is open. Uh, we, we, we are looking for as many partnerships and uh, volunteers for the, the project. Uh, thank you for your attention. Um, thank you to Open UK for this conference. And uh, never forget, your data is your data. Thank you. Uh, maybe we have some questions. Yeah. You want to run? We have one question, please. One second, already. Right, right here, okay. uh, the second yeah. uh, from the outside. Yeah. 
Hello there, my name is Jonathan. Um, I have a quick question about um, sort of usability, because, um, you know, with writing your own operating system for mobile phone, it might be hard to get new users to try it out. And I was wondering specifically what, like, upgrade paths are offered within the phone itself. So that, you know, if I'm going to try your operating system, tomorrow I might flash my phone to do that, try it out. But at that point, is it going to be able to, like, upgrade itself and that sort of... You know how with phones you usually have, like, over-the-air updates and stuff like that to be able to sort of maintain the usability, if that makes sense? Yeah. Yeah? So the answer is yes. We offer regular uh, monthly OT updates. And, uh, cool. Yeah. That's great. And if I could do one more as well, you said that the... Maps obviously has a proprietary backend. Is that using things like OpenStreetMaps or any open hardware behind uh, uh, open data behind the behind the scenes for those services? Yeah, um, actually, we are using the Magic Earth application. Um, Sorry, say again. Magic Earth. Okay, thank you. It's a proprietary application uh, your brand uh, made, um, and it's using a lot of uh, um, data uh, streams from OpenStreetMap, but uh, but it's packaged. The backend is um, closed, and and even the build, it's a proprietary application. So we are discussing with them uh, if if they can, if we can help them to make it open source. Uh, and we are also looking for other options for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Right, there's the. Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Sen. So I actually had a, of course I have a question for you. So I actually run on my Pixel 6a, not um, your operating system, but uh, sort of a similar concept called Graphene OS um, that has a sort of a very explicit focus on obviously security and privacy, but even goes so far as to like build their own kernel and implement their own security patches and, and stuff like that. So I was sort of curious you know, if, if you were to sort of make a comparison between the two, how would you compare yourself to some of the other security-focused Android forks, like Graphene OS? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we, we could do a track just on this uh, <laughs> question. Um, there are different products for different purposes. Uh, we are not that much into security. We don't do hardened security. Um, for many reasons, we, can, we cannot do everything, but uh, one of the reasons is that uh, privacy and security are different things, actually. Well, they, can, they have links, obviously, but uh, you can do very bad privacy with very good security. Uh, so, uh, so again, um, we do a Google um, mobile operating system that can be used by my daughter. She's using it. Uh, my wife, she's using it. I didn't ask her, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and probably, uh, if I had some time, um, my parents would do too. But um, <laughs> uh, uh, um, so the goal is really to have something that works out of the box. Uh, when you receive your, well, I mean, you can flash it, but many people just purchase uh, a Marina phone with the oh, EOS you installed. Okay. Uh, you, you, you start it, and it works. And you have all the applications, every, et cetera, et cetera. OK. Um, but we don't, we don't have any. Uh, you know, promise regarding security. Uh, if you are working mm, in the government or in secret agencies, or if you are in the mafia, um, <laughs> don't use our funds. They are not. They are probably not the best security, state-of-the-art security in the world. So there are some of our projects for projects for this. Uh, I hope this answers uh, your question. <laughs> yeah, well, I think we had a question here, and then there. Yeah, I just want to say I really like the um, advanced privacy um, feature that you introduced. Uh, most of mine, are, I think, are being blocked because I'm browsing to places, and so the trackers are being uh, blocked. I did have a, a small question, which I, I found a bit amusing, that the e-system also has some trackers that are being blocked by the advanced privacy uh, settings. I don't know if that's something that you've seen before or um, have any comments on. Um. That's that. Uh, that's the proof that it works. <laughs> well, um, well, actually, um, there is a, a, a small bug we have discovered. 
uh, two or three months ago that sometimes mix uh, some parts of the operating system and some application that was previously installed on the system. So we are working to fix this, and probably this answers your question. And one more question so there, please. Hi, I'm Jakub, and uh, I just have one question. So do you plan to support like open hardware um, so just users can get the piece of hardware and then get the software and install it or for example ship it from a provider of the open hardware phone how do you plan uh, this, basically? yeah yes uh, well actually uh, the thing is that I don't know a lot of open hardware smartphones that uh, are available on the market. Uh, so if you have suggestions, uh, I know about the Pine phone. Uh, the issue with uh, the Pine phone we tested is that it was really slow. So we are waiting for new, uh, new versions for this phone. But yes, uh, definitely yes. And uh, do you have other uh, brands in mind? or? Uh, yeah. yeah, MNT Reform is a laptop company. Uh, I mean, it's a project. I'm not sure if they're making a phone, they're making a pocket device that will be like a laptop. But uh, the Wi Fi just died, so I can check <laughs> if there is a phone. So, yeah. Okay, so I can check later. Uh, there is. We have, we have uh, EOS running on uh, Pinebooks. Uh, well, that is a single build, uh, not maintained, but um, and I have in mind uh, Librem, Librem uh, fonts, uh, but we haven't been able to, to do the, the work yet. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you so much, Gail. I think we are running out of time, so we are going to pass to our next speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.